Good morning and welcome to worship here on another frosty morning at Knox Presbyterian Church in Georgetown, Ontario. This is also the service for Limehouse Church, but as always, however you've come, however you've surfed in here to join us today, we're glad you're here and we hope the next hour will be spiritually uplifting to you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Just a few announcements before we get going with worship proper. Uh, again, our sanctuaries are closed to public worship at the moment, but we are hopeful that uh, news will be coming that will let us open in uh, sometime in February, hopefully in early March. Uh, we've just we've got to watch the COVID numbers and uh, and and feel that it is safe to open our doors again. Please keep praying for everybody who is busy uh, tending to those who have been and, and are infected. Um, I know that one of our prayers today is for the staffs of the hospitals who are continue to be overloaded, uh, though I was very grateful to see that the Brampton and Etobicoke General Hospitals have been down downgraded from an extreme gridlock to a basic gridlock which means that some beds are starting to open up and, and they're hoping that this is the sign of the tapering off of COVID patients. Uh, please continue to pray for that. Today we are observing the Sunday for the week of prayer for Christian unity. Uh, if you're on the church's email list, you have been receiving uh, daily prayer reminders uh, of, of things to pray for, uh, promoting unity in the Christian faith today. And we're going to talk a bit about this uh, as we go on. Uh, today's service notes come from the Middle East Council of Churches who provided these materials to the World Council of Churches. And uh, several of these councils work together to promote ecumenical harmony 
in the Christian faith around the world. Uh, so Kathy is going to be joining me up here for a lot of uh, responsive litanies that you are going to be, uh, of course, invited to share in as well. Our theme for the day is one that we explored just a few weeks ago, uh, but it was the suggestion of the Middle East Council of Churches that we work with the wise men who declared to King Herod, we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Uh, annual reports, if you haven't got your reports into Charles, if you're a Knox person, or Susan Cox, if you're a Limehouse person, please get them in as soon as possible. We need the annual reports collated so that they can be distributed. We still don't know when we can have our annual general meetings, but again, we are hopeful that we will be able to hold them later in the year. Uh, hopefully in, in March or April. As strange as it seems, there are several churches out there who habitually did that in the past, so we may adopt that for this year. Please pray for each other. Please pray for uh, the medical staffs, as I, as I had mentioned. Please pray for the situation between Russia and the Ukraine as tensions are simmering there. Uh, and, and not just there, but here in Canada as well. Uh, we have several Ukrainian immigrants as well as Russian immigrants, and they're not getting along right now either. Uh, so please pray that, that that situation will resolve and, and somehow be diffused uh, through negotiation and, and talking. Pray for those who struggle to make ends meet uh, as inflation pushes prices for commodities, uh, essential goods higher and higher. Um, I've noticed that the grocery store bill is, is higher and that's just for those in our house. I can't imagine for those who are struggling raising uh, multiple kids in, in this time frame. So please pray for them. And uh, an item that came up uh, several places in, in my feeds this week. Pray for those who are trying to break their COVID love affair with alcohol. Uh, I have seen several notifications for dry January and dry February. Um, I mean, it used to just be sober October. But people have been noticing that they have been drinking more and more and more during the COVID pandemic. And for many of them, they're realizing it's gotten to trouble, level, trouble levels. So please pray for them as they are trying to slow themselves down and, uh, and drink less with all the attenuating problems that come when you drink more uh, put behind them. Thank you everyone for your continued offerings and donations. And we're going to thank God for the generosity, uh, not only that comes from His Spirit, but which we are able to show to each other and to the world around us. God, our Father, we sometimes lose sight of the fact that your blessings go around the world and that we are not the only ones whom you love. With our offerings that we recognize today, we are not just participating in helping people live out the gospel here in this place, but indeed everywhere. Open our eyes and widen our gaze so that we may be able to see everyone in the world as your beloved children. Amen. So Kathy, would you join me for our call to worship, please? Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving and joy, bringing all the sick, the suffering, the marginalized, the refugees, and the uprooted before him, knowing that God can dispel our darkness with his light. As we pray today for the unity of the church, may we and communities also, may we and our communities also be the lights that guide others to Jesus the Savior. Glory be to you, Father Almighty, for you have revealed yourself through your creation 
and invited all people to stand in your presence. We have seen the star of Jesus in our lives and have come to worship him just as the Magi did. We offer ourselves today and we ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit among us. Unite us with one another as we come from the north and from the south, from the east and from the west, old and young, men and women, to bow down before you and offer you homage. Our heavenly King, let us, let us worship, worship God. God. Our opening hymn this morning, if you're following any hymn book at home, is number 313, O Worship the King. Worship the King, all glorious above, all gratefully sing God's power and God's love. Our shield and defender, the Ancient of Days, pavilion in splendor and girded with praise. O tell of God's might, O sing of God's grace, whose robe is the light, whose canopy space, whose chariots of wrath the deep thunder clouds form, and dark is the path on the wings of the storm. The earth with its star of wonders untold, Almighty thy power hath founded of old, hath established it fast by a changeless decree, and round it hath cast like a mantle the sea. Thy bountiful care, what tongues can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end. Our maker, defender, redeemer, and friend. O measureless might, Unchangeable love, while angels delight to hymns the above, thy ransomed creation in glory ablaze, in true adoration shall sing to thy praise. Our prayer of approach and confession this morning is done in litany form and then the confession portion is going to be done in unison with silences between the segments so i invite you to pray with us today we glorify you o lord creator of heaven and earth for you have set the lights in the vault of the sky you separated light from darkness and arranged signs to mark sacred times and days and years. You studded the firmament with stars. How majestic are your works! The heavens declare your glory and the skies proclaim the work of your hands. We glorify you, O Lord. We, we glorify, glorify you, you, Lord. We praise you, for you did not abandon us despite our rebellion, but sent your Son to brighten our darkness and be our light and our salvation. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humanity, and the light shines in the darkness. We praise you, O Lord. We, we praise, praise you, Lord. Lord. We worship you, O Lord, for you accompany us in the chaos of our life, through the power of your Holy Spirit. You light up our paths and give us wisdom and faith in a world of untruth and doubt. We worship you, Lord. We, we worship, worship you, Lord. Lord. 
We thank you, O Lord, for you send us into the world to reflect this light around us in our various churches and diverse cultures and to witness to Jesus, the one true King, offering ourselves to him. We thank you, Lord. We, we thank, thank you, you Lord. Lord. May all the peoples bow before you and worship you. We have often preferred darkness, but you have given us light. Therefore, we come to you confessing our sins, saying, We confess before you that we have turned away from your ways and disobeyed your ordinances. We have disfigured your good creation and squandered its resources through our consumerist practices. We have polluted your rivers and seas and poisoned your air and soil and contributed to the extinction of many species. We have acted selfishly towards our brothers and sisters. We have allowed our own needs and desires to prevail over our commitment to justice. We have built walls between us and planted the seeds of distrust towards the other. We have separated people based on ethnicity, religion, and gender and we have claimed Jesus on our side in any war we waged. Forgive all these thoughts and deeds, O Lord, as we come before you in repentance. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom you've sent in the fullness of time to redeem all the people, we ask you to have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and transform us into his glorious image so we can shine as a beacon of hope in our troubled world. Almighty God hears our prayers, has mercy on us, and forgives our sins. Thanks be to God, whom we praise with all our voices. Amen. Our anthem this morning is uh, a song that was prepared by the Canadian Council of Churches Choir. The choir you're going to be seeing is ecumenical from across Canada using a, a, a method that has become very, very popular during uh, the last two years. This is the remote choir method. Uh, and uh, I, I know I recognize a former classmate of mine in this choir, uh, but it is a beautiful piece entitled Between Darkness and Light. Oh uh -huh. 
Our responsive reading for this morning comes to us from Psalm 8, a beautiful psalm about the creative power of the Lord. Let us read it responsibly. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you've set in place. What is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You've made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. All flocks and herds and the animals of the wild. The birds in the sky and the fish in the sea. All that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, Lord our Lord, Lord, how majestic, majestic is, is your name in, in all, all the earth. earth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our scripture readings this morning are all concerned with light in darkness. We begin with the familiar Christmas reading of Isaiah chapter 9, starting at verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. 
Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Secondly, we're reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, starting at verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, wake up sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. And finally, again, we heard this just three weeks ago, but it's, it's a wonderful story to hear again. Matthew chapter 2, the first 11 verses. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed in all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And let's take a moment and ruminate upon this and what we have heard as we declare our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
one of the suggested hymns that we use to go along with this is, is not We Three Kings, but another hymn uh, or carol of the wise men's arrival. We're singing number 175, Brightest and Best. and best of the stars of the morning, dawn in our darkness and lend us thine aid. Star of the east, the horizon adorning, guide where our infantry teamer is laid. Cold on his cradle, the dew drops are shining, low lies his head with the beasts of the storm. Angels adore him in slumber reclining, maker and monarch and savior of all. Say shall we yield him in costly devotion, Orders of Edom and offerings divine, gems of the mountain and pearls of the ocean, myrrh from the forest or gold from the mine. Vainly we offer each ample oblation, vainly with gifts would his favor secure. Richer by far is the heart's adoration, dearer to God are the prayers of the poor. Brightest and best of the stars of the morning, drawn in our darkness and lend us thine aid. Star of the the horizon adorning, guide where our infant Redeemer is laid. And now, Lord, speak through me, or if need be, in spite of me, as we meditate upon the Word as you've given it to us today. Give us wisdom and understanding, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So as I've said, we are using the theme of the coming of the Magi today, which we explored only a few weeks ago from one perspective, but we're coming at it today from another one. Because one of the great questions of our world is whither Christianity, or rather, whither the church? You can pare it down smaller, whither the church in the West, whither the church in Canada, whither the Presbyterian Church in Canada. But in the end, it all comes down to the same thing. Where will Christianity be, and what will it look like in 10 years, 50 years, 100 years, and how will we get there? What will the road look like that gets us from here to there? I found myself considering this question as I read over the notes for this service as distributed to me by the Canadian Council of Churches. Uh, Canadian Council of Churches was formed in the waning days of the Second World War. Uh, it was formed because the various denominations in Canada of that day were responding to everyone and everything that was coming home from the Second World War, and they were trying to do so in a spirit of camaraderie and unity, at least as much as was possible between them. Denominational fractures exist everywhere. 
mostly along theological lines regarding the understanding of something like baptism or communion uh, or the current era's questions surrounding the acceptance of those who have a non-normative uh, sexuality. But its basic mission, the basic mission of every church and every ecumenical council that has tried to bring them together is to breathe Christ into the lives of people, whether through mission work, ministry, the collaborative production of worship and study resources, or through worship opportunities such as this. The Presbyterian Church in Canada belongs to many ecumenical bodies, including the Canadian Council of Churches, the World Council of Churches, from which the material actually comes, uh, and the World Communion of Reformed Churches. And if you're an old hand at the church and you're going, Steve, don't you mean the World Alliance of Reformed Churches? Uh, that body amalgamated with another uh, group in 2010 to form the World Communion. And it is to this body that we are currently attached. Uh, the World Council of Churches, by the way, I believe the numbers are, it represents uh, over 200 denominations in 140 countries. And the World Council selects a region to write the materials for the uh, week of prayer for Christian unity about three years in advance. It's committee work, and the committee needs a time to form and do its work, and then the material needs to be submitted to be formatted for distribution, prepared for circulation. So in about 2019, the Middle East Council of Churches was chosen to prepare the materials for 2022. In November of 2021, Dr. Reverend Dr. Rima Nasrallah met with the governing board of the Canadian Council of Churches and addressed them regarding the presentation of these materials. As I read through her comments, I confess, I found myself unable to edit much at all because her thoughts just followed one on top of the other and and i found myself growing in my learning and understanding as i read them and i hope you will learn and grow in the next few minutes as i read the bulk of what she said to that group for you to hear she began as we came together to write the text for the week of prayer for christian unity our region, the Middle East, was in disarray. Not only did we start working during the early days of COVID-19 lockdowns, but our own countries were deeply shaken by geopolitical changes and tensions. Lebanon, in particular, was witnessing a popular uprising. Years of corruption, incompetent leadership, and clientelism pushed us to the limit. So many in Lebanon burst into the streets asking for change, asking for justice, asking for the removal of despotic leaders. A few months later, another event shook us to the core. 2,700 tons of ammonium nitrate irresponsibly stored in the warehouses at the port of Beirut exploded in a quasi-nuclear fashion, demolishing homes, churches, shops, schools, hospitals, and killing, injuring, disabling, and dislocating hundreds of people. With masks on our faces and an ache in our hearts, we came together from the different church families of Lebanon and the region to compose a prayer and propose a theme so that the world would pray with us for the unity of the church worldwide. On the one hand, we could not blot out the political and regional worries, nay, grievances. On the other, we were longing for God's gentle presence in the midst of our pain. And so this theme, we saw the star in the east and we came to worship him, was born out of a scriptural text that joins political challenges with the humble worship of a newborn babe. She goes on. The wise men, or magi, came from the east to, to Anatole, the rising. 
the place of the stars rising, or simply the east, looking for a special king. The actions of this narrative take place in the east by people from the east. Tradition says that the Magi came from Persia. Uh, They brought with them myrrh and frankincense, uh, both trees that grow in Arabia. They visited Jerusalem and Bethlehem. And after their departure, the Holy Family went down to Egypt. It's as if they've been moving among us and between us in the area we inhabit. Sadly, this geographic area, which possesses a long history of Christian presence, rich and diverse liturgical traditions, and where Epiphany is the more important feast, is being steadily emptied of its Christian population. The 20th century massacres and revolutions eliminated a sizable portion of the Christian population from this area. And the 21st century wars and crises seem to be finishing off the rest. For the Christians of the Middle East, this has become an existential struggle. One that asks, what if there would be no more Christians in the East? No more Christians who know frankincense and who can daily walk the flight route in Egypt? What about the star who appeared in the east and the baby born in Bethlehem? Does this place not matter? Are we or are we not the guardians of that light in the place where it first appeared? But then we realize that this light, though it appeared in the east, is not only for the east, nor only for the Christians. We looked at the Magi, those strangers, those outsiders, and we were humbled by the fact that they were not only hungry for the light, but could also recognize it, even when those close by could not. The insiders had no idea and did not see the extraordinary miracle that was among them. And so thinking of the Magi, we had to reflect on the universality of the grace of God. Not only geographically, but also to all the people. Here in the text, it might be a reference to the Gentiles, which is not only another ethnic group, but a group with its own religious practices. Stargazing, reading the signs of the time, almost as a kind of priestly ministry. It was an activity that was frowned upon by the Jews. After all, the Bible forbade divination and astrology. Uh, You can read it in Deuteronomy 4, verse 9, uh, Deuteronomy 18, verse 19, and Isaiah 47, verse 13. Yet it is not the king of the Jews, nor their priests, nor wise Hebrew people close by who were attracted to it, but others. Meditating on the Magi, we were also driven to think about how sometimes we tend to claim the light that came to dispel the darkness through Christ. Assuming it is only for us and behaving as if we alone understand its value. In the Middle East, we are surrounded by Muslims and Jews as well as other smaller religious groups. What have we done with that light in their midst? Have we assumed that they could not see it? Some commentators point to the fact that the Magi relied on natural revelation, the star, to get to the region, but that they, but that they needed special revelation, recalled by Herod's chief priests and scribes, in order to find the exact location of Christ, Bethlehem of Judea. Though this separation between natural and special revelation is a divisive discussion among us Christians, it raises for us the importance of our special revelation as we gather around Scripture. The light is for everyone, but our Scripture should also be accessible and understandable to everyone, particularly in our dark world. A world becoming darker today as confusion reigns which is to say no one seems to know the way, and despair is rising with the after effects of COVID-19. For the Middle East, this darkness seems to be our steady companion. 
Since the days of Herod, one empire after the other took turns occupying and oppressing our people. Of course, we have to admit that as Christians, we sometimes cooperated with the oppressors and sometimes made big compromises. But the fact remains that up till today, leadership and kingship are thorny topics. As we were writing our text, we were looking at the world leaders around us and the models we find, uh, not only in politics, but also in church. And we were wondering from whom we have learned our models of leadership. From the self-emptying Christ, who did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, as we read in Philippians, or from the Herods of the world. Herod, that despotic leader made king over his own people with the aid of the imperial occupier Rome and through warfare, he was not there to serve others, but to serve himself. He was paranoid and insecure, fearing the one born king because he knew that he did not deserve leadership. And so in order to safeguard his position, he resorted to lying and deceit, he pretended to be religious, claiming that he too wanted to worship the new king, a ruse that ultimately helped him kill and retain power. Eventually, he executed a massacre. Many innocents were killed so that one person could remain in power. And no one seemed to be bothered by it except the wailing parents. So many wailing parents. Not only in Judea, in Gaza, in the West Bank, in Aleppo, in Beirut, in Baghdad, in Cairo. The sound of wailing parents fills the air. Herod's despotic rule drove the Holy Family, just like so many other families in their circumstances, to become refugees. So they went to Toronto and Vancouver, they joined the Syrian community in Ottawa or Halifax or the, the Iranians in Calgary. What a terrible scene. And just in the midst of all this injustice and violence is the serene Christ. The one who makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. The one who presents us with a completely different kind of kingship than that encountered in Herod or the Herods of today. A king who came not to be served, but to serve. He was born on the margins to be with those on the margins. In the small town of Bethlehem, an insignificant place and in an unusual family. His birth and his life brought both peace and disruption. And with him we feel called, together as churches and communities of faith, to bring peace and disruption. The disruption of oppressive structures and systems of injustice that permeate our world. And by disturbing, we also work towards peace for those who are downtrodden, pushed to the margin, robbed of their humanity, massacred, traumatized, starved, and impelled to become refugees of war or of climate change. As we face this challenge, we in the Middle East have asked ourselves, can we speak of such callings, such tremendous callings, to disturb the comfortable and comfort the disturbed, to stand up in the face of tyranny and challenge systems, we Middle Eastern Christians who are shrinking by the hour and are weakened with every new blow, And so, before being discouraged, we thought of Bethlehem. You, Bethlehem, are by no means least. Being small, being weak, yeah, a little flock, a, a grain, a bit of salt, has never been a problem in Scripture. On the contrary, this has always been a means for blessing. In a consumerist world where we are taught to think with the logic of the market, we have come to confuse numbers with success, to think that bigger is better. 
This has not only been a discouraging point for us, but we see many of our friends and partners in Europe and other places where secularism has slimmed down their numbers stand paralyzed, terrified of the smaller flock. The focus on numbers has blinded us from focusing on our gifts. Gifts that we bring together. Gifts that are unique. And which, as we lay down together at the feet of the newborn king, and which can tell a story and witness to the royal and divine child who would die for the life of the world. Finally, we pondered on the other way. A little detail in the story that was probably intended to reveal the evil of Herod and the saving message of God speaks of the Magi returning through another way. Though making a little hermeneutical jump, we were very inspired by that sentence. It made us think and ask whether God is maybe calling us to take another way, a new way different from what we've been doing so far. Particularly in these COVID times, in crisis times, in changing times, in times when maybe some of us are tired of talking about the same things and the same topics and going about things in the same old way. So we place that in our prayers, asking the Lord to show us a new way. And to give us creativity as we seek to walk together in our ecumenical journey following the light of the star so that we can rejoice with great rejoicing. I can't add much to Dr. Nasrallah's words. That thought and that challenge should resonate with us in that moment. That though we may be small congregations beset with various challenges, is there yet something for us to be doing? Is there another way for us to be following? How do we find that? Focus on it. Bring it to be. Through God, of course. Through God and Christ, and the Spirit that He gave us. Amen. Our prayers of intercession this morning, again, written by the Middle East Council of Churches. Uh, It is another responsive litany prayer. And so as we pray this morning, there will be a response. It is a simpler response Uh, When we get to the end of each section, uh, I will lead us in saying, O Lord, hear our prayer, and I invite you to respond as well in your homes. So let us pray. With faith and confidence, we come in prayer before you, Lord, Father, Son, and Spirit. The Magi came from the East to pay homage and offer special gifts from their cultures and countries. We pray today for all Christian communities around the world in all their diversity of worship and tradition. Lord, we ask you to preserve these treasures, particularly in areas of the world where the presence and survival of Christians is threatened by violence and oppression. O Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, hear our prayer. The early years of the Lord's life were marked by violence and massacres at the orders of the despot Herod. We pray for children living in places in the world where violence continues and where its results are tangible. Strengthen, O Lord, the bonds of unity and mutual love among our churches and help us to cooperate and witness to your holy name. Inspire us to work without ceasing in order to defend the oppressed and include the marginalized. Encourage us to stand together in the face of tyranny and oppressive regimes as we seek your kingdom among us. O Lord, hear our prayer. O O Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. After the visit of the Magi, 
The Holy Family experienced migration through the wilderness and became refugees in the land of Egypt. We pray for all the refugees and uprooted people in this world. Equip us, Lord, to show hospitality to those driven from their homes and grant us the spirit of welcome to those looking for a safe haven. O Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. The birth of Jesus was good news for all, gathering people from different nations and religions in worship of the Holy Child. We pray for our efforts to seek harmony and dialogue with other religions. Lord, give us humility and patience to walk with others with respect on their journey. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. The Magi return to their home by a different way. We pray for our churches in this changing world. Lord, help us find new and creative ways to follow you and to witness to you so that the world may believe. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. When the Magi saw the Holy Child, they rejoiced with great joy. Heavenly Father, fix our eyes on Him so we do not lose our way. Unite us in the Lord Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, and who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. May the Spirit's love, flowing like water across the face of the earth, fill you with every gift for the good of the world. And the blessing of God, the eternal source, the fountain of life, and the giver of gifts be with you always. Amen. We conclude our service with a song of Jesus shining in the darkness 376, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Lord, the light of your love is shining In the midst of the darkness shining Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us Set us free by the truth you now bring us Shine on me, shine on me Shine, Jesus, shine Fill this land with the fire Set our hearts on fire Flow, river, flow Flood the nations With grace and mercy Send forth your word Lord, and let there be light Lord, I come to your awesome presence From the shadows into your radiance by your blood i may enter your brightness search me try me consume all my darkness shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine fill this land with the father's glory place spirit place set our hearts on On your kingly brightness.
likeness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory, mirrored in they our lives tell your story, shine on me, shine on me, shine Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, blaze, spirit blaze, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, 